Solar done right will absolutely slash your bills. But for total energy freedom, you need a battery. Adding batteries lets you slash your bills even further and keep the lights on when the grid goes down. But buying a battery for your home is nowhere as near as simple as going to the shop to grab that pack of double A's. There's plenty to know. What prices are reasonable? Are there any rebates? What brands are good? What will they look like on your home? And are they even worth the dollars? Grab a beverage and I'll get you up to speed on buying and owning batteries faster than you can say lithium titanate oxide. Let's start with everyone's first question. How much do they cost? A decent sized battery from a reputable brand will run you around 10 grand before installation. There are two key things that make batteries pricey. First is their capacity, which is measured in kilowatt hours or KWH. Obviously, the more they store, the more expensive they're gonna be. I say, don't bother with anything smaller than 10 kilowatt hours. The second thing is the brand. A name brand battery, like this Tesla, will cost more than some of these no-name batteries coming out of China. So, roughly 10 grand for 10 kilowatt hours, and on top of that, you gotta pay someone accredited to install it. DIY battery installs are a no-go here in Australia. A straightforward install might set you back 1500 bucks, but if it's a tricky job with long cable runs, bollards, or fireproof backing needed, you could be paying $3,000 or more. Now compare these fully installed prices for similar sized budget, mid-range, and premium batteries. My website, solarquotes.com.au, has a comparison of all the major batteries available in Australia, listing all the stats you'd want to know, especially prices. There's a lot of batteries on that table. Which ones would I recommend to a friend? Well, this chart shows all the brands I trust. I personally have a Tesla on my home and a SunGrow on my rental property. So if you shout out for a battery, how long will it take for you to make that money back? And then some. Payback time for batteries can range from no brainer to not worth it, depending on a bunch of things. First up, the size of your solar system. Heaps of solar means your battery will be reliably charged for free all year round. A best case battery payback scenario assumes you fully charge and discharge your battery every day of the year. Then there's your electricity plan. Ones that charge different prices for electricity at different times of day, known as time of use tariffs, will always give you a better battery payback than a flat tariff. Finally, your savings will depend on the price of your fully installed battery. Be really wary of aggressive sales spiels claiming you'll make a mozza. If you buy today, you will never get another electricity bill and your cups of tea will taste nicer. Oh, I love a nice cup of tea. Would you like to come in? Do your research before buying. Never buy from door knockers or unsolicited letters. If you're really into numbers, have a look at my solar and battery calculator. It's linked in the description. It'll give you estimated savings and payback based on your specific situation. For a general example, let's use the Tesla Powerwall. Now, one of these fully installed in Australia is gonna cost you around $15,000 at the time of filming. Here's its annual savings and payback time. See how the payback on a flat rate sucks compared to a time of use electricity tariff? You save more on a time of use tariff because you're not using electricity during the expensive peak times, usually around 4 to 8 p.m. That's when the typical household uses the most energy and when you've got no solar energy because the sun's gone down. Now, many time of use tariffs offer cheap off-peak rates, either in the dead of night or the middle of the day, if you're on what's called a solar sponge tariff. Now, they're great because if your solar can't completely fill your battery during a string of bad weather, you can use your off-peak rate to top it off. If you like to live dangerously, yeah, baby, <laughs> yeah. There's one electricity retailer called Amber that bases their rates on the wholesale electricity market with prices changing every 30 minutes. Pretty wild, right? It's a risky business because when demand is high, rates can spike as high as, are you ready for it? $19 a kilowatt hour. But when there's excess energy in the grid, prices can get super low or even negative. That means they're paying you to use energy, a great opportunity to charge that battery. Such crazy volatility means Amber is definitely not for the faint of heart. But I know people using Amber who've scored over $2,000 in bill credits in just one year. So I've covered how much batteries can cost and what you can expect them to save you. Now for the second most asked question I get, are batteries worth it? On a standard flat rate, you're looking at at least 12 years to recoup the cost of a power wall like this. 
Most homeowners I talk to consider that to be too long. State battery rebates, virtual power plants, and buying cheaper batteries, but not too cheap, can improve your payback period. But a much better and easier way to supercharge your payback is to go onto a time of use tariff. A six year payback is pretty tidy if you ask me, and that's not even counting feel good factors like being protected from blackouts, supporting renewables, sticking it to your energy company, or being able to show off the latest tech to your friends and family. Now, to give these battery payback periods some context, a study in the Journal of Energies says in moderate climates with daily use, lithium batteries should last 14 to 16 years. In hotter climates, it says expect 12 to 14 years. Warranties range from less than two years, if you read the small print on some really cheap batteries, to 10 years for most NMC and LFP batteries, and up to 20 years for the more expensive LTO chemistry. So in summary, batteries on a flat tariff, yeah. batteries on a time of use tariff, hell yeah. Now, I mentioned battery rebates before. Let's get into them. There's a battery rebate that can chop five grand off the cost of a battery and drastically improve your payback time. What's the catch? It's only for people living in the NT. For the rest of us, there's no federal battery rebate. Bill Shorten wanted to introduce one as a campaign promise back in 2019, and we all know how that turned out for him. How good is Australia? <laughs> Victoria and the ACT have interest-free loans that can take the sting out of needing to fork out thousands up front. If you join a virtual power plant, which is a network of home batteries controlled by an energy company to charge and discharge to support the grid, you can also get a subsidy from your battery. In exchange, they'll cycle your battery more than you would, which will shorten its life. Now, I've got a full comparison of every VPP on offer on my website. Beyond dollars and cents, having a battery means you can keep the lights on if the grid craps out. Having such a safety net is becoming more and more valuable as the weather becomes wilder and less predictable. Now, not all batteries include backup capability. Let me explain. Most people think that having a battery equals blackout protection, but that's not always the case. Blackout protection is a feature of most, but not all batteries. And the level of protection offered by a battery varies based on a number of factors. First up, backup current. This determines how many appliances your battery can run at once. Then there's surge current. This is the maximum power spike your battery can handle if you switch on a large appliance like an aircon. And then you've got switch over time. That's the amount of time it takes for the battery to kick in when the grid goes down. For some, it's essentially instant. For others, it can take a minute or longer. Some systems will not charge from your solar panels if the grid goes down, even in the middle of a beautiful sunny day. You need to watch out for this, especially if you have three-phase power to your home. And you want a fail-safe design, so if your battery's inverter fails, your grid electricity keeps flowing to the essentials. For about 100 bucks, you can add a bypass switch to keep the essential powered up, even if the battery hardware itself fails. A good installer navigates all this for you. If you're eyeing a budget battery, knowing how its capabilities stack up is crucial. Having a battery big enough to back up your whole home can make things very expensive. I recommend only backing up critical circuits like your fridge, lights, living room, including internet router, and a smaller aircon. Focus on the essentials and you'll ride things out comfortably if a blackout hits. Just don't expect to be taking a sauna without the grid. Virtually every home battery installed in Australia uses lithium ion chemistry. Why is it so popular? The short answer is, no other battery chemistry comes close to beating lithium ions performance, size, efficiency, and ease of maintenance, while also remaining competitive on price. But lithium ion batteries are not perfect. In the rare event they catch fire, they burn like hell. There's several different lithium ion chemistries out there. Only three are commercially available in Australia. You've got NMC, LFP, and the much rarer LTO. Nickel manganese cobalt NMC offers the highest capacity and power that catches fire at a lower temperature. Lithium iron phosphate catches fire less easily 
and can be cheaper. And then you've got exotic lithium titanate oxide or LTO batteries. They last way longer than NMC or LFP and they are much safer, but they cost a fortune and are only made by a handful of companies. Now here's a fun fact. The Solar Edge home battery uses NMC cells and it has its own built-in fire extinguisher. So, what will batteries look like on your house? Let's take a break from all these facts and figures and I'll show you what a battery will actually look like on your home. After all, you're probably gonna be showing it off to your mates. Batteries all look really good in the marketing materials, but the reality can be a lot less sexy, especially once all the mandatory safety stickers are attached. An all-in-one solar battery system contains almost everything you need in the one big box. Battery, battery inverter, solar inverter, and backup switchover. In marketing materials, you'll see them looking disembodied with zero wires attached. The reality is not as neat. You need isolating switches, power, comms cables, warning stickers, and if it's in a garage, you're gonna need a bollard. Then you've got the separate battery and inverter. A separate battery and battery inverter won't look as tidy as a well-installed all-in-one, but a good installer can make it look pretty good. Then you've got the Powerwall 2. The Powerwall 2 is sort of like an all-in-one with its integrated battery and battery inverter but you also need an extra gateway box. So when it's installed on your house, it doesn't look quite as minimalist as the Tesla marketing material shows. And then you've got the Tesla Powerwall 3, which is coming out mid 2024, and that's got an integrated battery, battery inverter, and solar inverter. So you won't have the solar inverter on your wall, but you'll still have the gateway. So that'll look a little more integrated. Installations can get a lot less sexy fast if you don't have many compliant installation locations available. Enter Australia's really strict battery standards. When it comes to installing batteries, Australia has got some really strict standards. The main standard is AS5139 and it dictates exactly where you can and can't put batteries. Your installer will be across the specifics, but here's some examples of where you can't install a battery. Within 600 millimeters of a window, Oh dear, <laughs> don't worry. My Powerwall install predates the current standards, so I'm not breaking the law, I promise. Other places you can't install a battery include under the floor of a habitable room or on a wall shared with a habitable room. If you haven't got a non-combustible barrier between the battery and the habitable room. If you have, you need a fire rated sheet behind the battery like this. And you definitely can't put one in your dining room like some battery brochures would have you believe. Now. How does where you live affect buying a battery? When it comes to climate, if you're down south in Melbourne or Hobart, your solar won't produce as much as someone in, say, Brisbane. So size up your solar system to reliably charge your batteries across winter. And if you're living somewhere hot as hell, keep your battery cool or its lifespan will shorten significantly. Exposure to high temperatures is the number one thing that shortens a battery's life. In WA, SA and Queensland, you've now got solar sponge electricity plans. They give you dirt cheap daytime electricity to charge your batteries from. This is awesome for cloudy days and expect these tariffs to come across Australia in the coming years. Now, certain government battery rebates, interest-free loans or virtual power plans are also area specific. But the biggest issue is often just getting your local electricity network to give you the permissions you need for enough solar plus a battery inverter. Good installers are a godsend here. They know how to handle those local electricity networks and how to get around their silly rules. Now let's move on to the three techniques of dodgy battery salespeople. While many honest companies ethically sell batteries explaining the pros, cons and costs, there are some bad actors out there who exploit consumer confusion for profit. Oh yes sir, in fact our systems are guaranteed to make you at least 25% more virtuous and they are warranted to infinity and beyond. These dodgy salespeople promise unrealistic results to earn sky high commissions. Their two favourite tactics are the classic bait and switch. They quote you on a tantalisingly cheap battery and on install day demand thousands more to properly finish the install. Number two is promising zero dollar bills. All you need to do is buy their shiny, overpriced, undersized battery. They don't give a rat whether your solar is big enough to charge the battery or if the battery is the right size for your home. Hell, they probably won't even look at your bills before promising to get them to zero. 
Let's move on to battery warranties and what to watch out for. Reading battery warranties is about as much fun as sorting tax receipts. I know, because I've read a bunch. There are a few tricks and traps to watch out for. I've linked to those in the description, but most of them you probably won't be tripped up by. The main thing you need to watch out for with battery warranties is are they backed by an Australian office? Many companies have started to import and sell batteries from overseas. Now, there's nothing wrong with this, but ask yourself, how likely is it that a small importer will be around over the next 10 years ready and willing to assist you with any issues you may have. So that's an overview of buying batteries here in Australia. If you're hungry for even more info, go to my website, solarquotes.com.au. The site contains everything you need to know to research batteries, from reviews of solar installers and hardware, to payback calculators and tools to help you find a better feed-in tariff. And when you're ready to take the next step, we'd be happy to arrange quotes from our network of over 500 vetted solar and battery installers all over Australia. Just pop in your postcodes at solarquotes.com.au, hit the red button and leave the rest to me. I literally guarantee you'll get a good install when you use our service. Thanks for watching.